Well, hello everybody, Bart here. Today, a very unusual video. Nothing about the Bonanza, nothing about flying in the States. We are in Poland, that's right. We are in Gdańsk, Poland, which is on the northern uh, part of the country by the Baltic Sea. And we're flying with a friend of mine and uh, his uh, TB10 Tobago. Uh, as you know, I used to have a Trinidad, so I'm somewhat familiar with these airplanes. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, came here uh, and decided to uh, go see how it is to fly in general aviation in Poland. Uh, beautiful day today as you can see we have clear skies we had to wait quite a bit actually because you know often uh, by the sea they have the fog the advection fog like they have in, in California for instance so I had to wait quite a bit to get it to burn off and uh, but then everything is cleared up we're gonna get the uh, airplane topped off with 100 LL and get going a little bit about general aviation what I've learned thus far it is a lot more complicated and a lot more expensive than it is in the States which probably is not a surprise for you because you know, this is a real blessing we have in the States that we get to enjoy general aviation in such an unencumbered way. For, for, for instance, um, no 100 LL un unless you fly into this big international airport. Well, you might not think it's big, but you believe it or not, this is considered an inter international airport uh, with a you know, commercial terminal. And here we are in the ger general aviation ramp. So couldn't uh, find a gas anywhere near, uh, closer by. Uh, second thing is, well, you see, as uh, the just landed here. Second of all, uh, we cannot, uh, well, I cannot uh, leave the airplane premises unless I'm escorted and have to go through a security check. Um, so, you know, even the general aviation has to go through kind of security checks just like the regular uh, passengers would have to go. So, I actually have to wear this orange vest here and be standing by the airplane until we get the plane fueled up and then have to take me from the security. You have to fly a flight plan even for VFR flights, you know, and get a permission. You cannot just fly into the class Delta airspace or whatever this class would have been and just basically land. So it just a little bit more for VFR I'm talking about. So as you can see, a lot more costly, expensive, you know, have, we will have to pay to land. But anyway, uh, it's all worth it because uh, I actually um, was born in Gdańsk and I used to live here for a number of years. I never got to fly. Uh, in general aviation here so this is really the first time I get to see how my former uh, or my homeland or my former birthplace and everything looks from the from the air and this believe it or not guys this used to be the old airport the old Gdańsk airport that uh, uh, I used to fly <laughs> uh, when I was young uh, and then they built this really nice beautiful terminal called Lech Wałęsa former our for, former Polish president Lech Wałęsa airport that they built here and that's where all the commercial airliners are coming from. So you see on the ramp, those Sokadas, you know, they're very popular in the, uh, in the in Europe and in Poland as well. You see another TP-10 over there. You see a Piper. Uh, you see a Cessna Skyhawk and, uh, well, I'm not familiar with that other airplane over there. And then another Skyhawk here. So uh, this is the extent of the general aviation. And I think over there you've got a, uh, you've got a Meridian maybe. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, of the lattice. I'm not that familiar, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, so here we are. And um, what else I can tell you? We're gonna fuel up, get a flight plan, and then we're gonna fly over, uh, kind of over my birthplace area where I went to school and everything. We're gonna fly all the way to the uh, oh, uh, you know Bay of Gdańsk, and then we're gonna fly all the northern part of Poland and make a big loop and, and, and come back and land. And lots of grass runways in Poland, so a lot of those general aviation guys, unfortunately, like this kind of airports or landing zones you know they're they're just grass runways no aft gas so it's kind of a pain because you have to come to a big airport pay to land and pay to get your airplane refueled before you can before you can take off again uh, so that's that's about that and uh, but I'm just so glad that the weather cooperated you know because um, we had to wait quite a bit to get this to clear up but fortunately uh, we got a clear skies and hopefully we'll have a real nice day to enjoy it so stay tuned. The first thing that I had to get used to while flying in Europe is the altimeter settings given by the controller are obviously uh, in hectopascals you know, or QNH as they call it and in America obviously it is in the inches of mercury. This airplane, this TB10 originated in the United States believe it or not. It made made a full circle from Europe to the uh, US and then back to, to Europe 
and now the altimeter on this thing was only in the in the um, inches of uh, mercury so I had to break up that uh, POH and use a, there's a table in there to convert it uh, to uh, from the from the hectopascals to inches of mercury so we can set the altimeter obviously it's the elevation of the field is very close to sea level because it's a port city anyway after a uh, short taxi uh, we are positioned on runway 11 so we are uh, taken off relatively speaking to the east and uh, we're taking off uh, departing to the east and then we'll be making a left turn uh, to uh, the Bay of Gdansk and you will see uh, some of the uh, neighborhoods that are there. This is a, uh, a large airport, international airport. Uh, the Gdansk Tri-City area consists of three major cities. A million people or so live in that, in that area so it's not small uh, but um, the only one runway in this in this airport, and um, therefore, uh, you know, it might might get a little congested. Although, you know, the traffic really is not that bad over there. Air, air, airline traffic. I mean, it's gotten exponentially busier over the years, but it's um, it's not a O'Hare. Let's put it this way. So we're climbing out, and majority of this flying is going to be uh, at relatively low altitudes, uh, around thousand feet or so. AGL and uh, that's uh, so so the flying in Europe generally speaking obviously is somewhat different than um, or in Poland at least I should say I'm not going to generalize all in the Europe but in Poland is different um, in, the, in the US that uh, in those uh, busier areas um, you have uh, basically are on the flight plan and you're talking to controllers and the controllers control these let's put it generally speaking, these areas of airspace uh, and they call them, they call them uh, TMAs um, and they, those TMAs go from say ground so surface to say 2,700 feet or 900 feet so when you look at this VFR map it gets, um, it gets a little bit crazy because you think man this is such a busy airspace and they have these um, these term this TMAs or this the kind of let's call it airspaces kind of overlapping and they're kind of haphazardly seemingly um, oriented but anyway enough of the airspace here's the uh, soccer stadium it was built for the Euro Cup a few years ago uh, you see that down um, it's gonna disappear under the wing the color <coughs> of this is amber like and uh, this is uh, to symbolize the national stone of Poland, which is amber, which is harvested from the Baltic Sea. You see down below um, the suburb of Gdańsk, you see a lot of those communist area buildings. There is a one that uh, you will see hopefully in a, in a short while. Um, when this, I think it's right disappearing under the wing right now, which is called Falobie. It's right there, you can see it under the wing. It's one of the largest or longest uh, apartment buildings, in if not in Poland, but maybe in Europe. Uh, thousands of families that live in there. Again, this is the uh, Amber Soccer Stadium that was built for the Euro Cup. Um, looks, looks pretty nice and you know, with, with the sun on it, uh, it, it looks really beautiful. Now we are, <clears throat> now we are uh, approaching, I believe it's Sopot, which is one of those um, cities between Gdańsk and Gdynia, kind of in the middle of it, and that city is uh, famous for um, just basically vacationing and uh, used to be a spa type of a place. <clears throat> so we're following along the coastline and um, very quickly we will reach Gdynia, a city that I lived for a number of years. It's funny because when you're little or when you travel by car or by tram or by train, took you, you know, a uh, few hours to get from one place to the other. When I was little, you know, I literally took me uh, from to my grandmother's house who lived in Gdańsk from my place where I lived in Virginia. It took me a few hours between all the different public transportation methods and it literally took us five minutes flying there if not that. This is Gdynia, this is Bulvar, it's called Bulvar. Uh, and um, there is a um, aquarium there at the tip. You can see a sailboat, kind of historic sailboat. And uh, <clears throat> there's a lot, uh, some in the summertime you can 
catch a ferry that will take you from, from Gdynia to the place we're flying to, which is called Hel, H-E-L. Uh, and my kids always laugh when I say uh, uh, when I say the name of the place because you know they love to say uh, we're going to Hel together. But it's it's the name of the like little peninsula there that we're gonna fly over. And, and also kind of a summer tourist town. Here we're reaching Gdynia. As you you may or may not know, there's uh, the, the whole area there is famous for shipyard, for shipbuilding and shipyards. Probably the most famous shipyard is the Gdańsk shipyard, which we left behind us. Famous for the Solidarity Movement and Lech Wałęsa and all of that stuff back in the 80s. However. Gdynia also has a shipyard um, and uh, the whole kind of area is the, the industry uh, in, the, in this area predominantly has been shipbuilding. Unfortunately <clears throat> over the last say two decades uh, it's not been going so well um, and the, uh, not, both of these shipyards are not nearly as busy as they used to be and I think Dice shipyard actually is went bankrupt and then it's just kind of a shell what it used to be and a lot of that bit of shipbuilding these days is <coughs> is uh, refurbishing uh, crew and uh, sorry uh, the, uh, like a, uh, bigger ships that are basically being refurbished and repaired and also um, just some kind of a repair work as opposed to building new ships <coughs> so it only took us 10 minutes it's another airport here. You think, what, what's going on here? Well, this is a funny story. This is, used to be a military airbase back in the communist times. A few years ago, the, the other city, Gdynia, decided to build a competing airport here. You see, it, you saw a terminal there to the left. Got a lot of funds from the European Union for this, and then <clears throat> things ground to a halt. I don't know all of the details, but uh, <clears throat> the long and short of it is, Right now you've got this gigantic runway, you've got a control tower, that there's some guys in there because we talked to them and got a permission to overfly it. <clears throat> and, uh, but absolutely nothing's going on. Uh, you drove there by in the car and there's like a road that leads to it and a gate and basically it's everything kind of ground to the hole. The only thing that's going on there that I know of is during the summer they have a big rock uh, kind of, uh, op it's called Opener, it's a music festival that they have on the premises of the, of the airport. I think what happened is Dinya wanted to have its own airport and uh, you know one of those competing things we want to have our own airport we don't want to use yours and so they got some European funding for it but then I think when somebody scrutinized this stuff figured out what the heck you're gonna have another airport five minutes away that makes no sense to be sinking those kind of money in there and especially that your traffic really doesn't warrant this uh, it was funny because the controllers were really issuing us commands, uh, do this, do that, make a turn, descend, and the whole time we were flying maybe you saw one airplane in the distance. So the traffic is just not not really significant there. But you think like with uh, with the type of controls and the type of communications you have to do there, you feel like you're flying over New York or something. Anyway, uh, we're going to uh, hell now, so yes, uh, if you think you bar go to hell at this point in the video because I'm boring you to death, you have accomplished something because we are overflying that peninsula and that took us a long time to make that to circumnavigate this thing it's like a skinny little piece of land um, that looks benign on the map but it took us a long time to fly around it again beaches and summer um, touristy place in the summertime so people go on the Baltic Sea there's a lot of um, hotels and resorts so you can see kind of how, how long it extends and it took us uh, now, so I was actually surprised. It takes you forever to get to go there if you're driving on a car in a car or in a train, because you gotta basically go. And there's only one road, and you just go up to the to the very end. But um, it took us, comparatively speaking, long on the airplane. Uh, on a boat, you cut across right the bay, so it really doesn't take that long. Here we're making the turn. Uh, this is the very end of it, and we're flying. Uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be flying back back kind of home to, to where we. To came from and as you can see the whole time our altitude is not significant not very high um, and we're in the communication with uh, let's call it uh, some kind of approach radio terminal control at all times and uh, 
it's a VFR flight, uh, but we do have a flight plan and we're in a constant communication. Obviously, after the tower takeoff, they, they basically handed us over to the next uh, control area. I'm sure if I f was flying there on a regular basis, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you just, it's probably better that you're talking to somebody uh, for safety and, and everything. It's just the amount of uh, the different, um, if you look, you would have to take a look at the map, but if you were taking a look at the VFR map, the, the spaces are not like circles. Uh, but they're just kind of odd shaped um, areas so you have to be careful kind of know where you're going but then if you leave that Gdańsk area go south kind of in the countryside yeah, I think it's pretty pretty much you're on your own well anyway we're, we cut across the bay flying from hell back and this is this is Gdynia this is the north part of Gdynia and, and, the, and the shipyards and everything <coughs> so uh, you can kind of see how it looks. Even unfortunately, the sun is kind of into into our lens, and in the distance you see all the big gigantic cranes and, and everything. Now, I think a lot they're doing um, both of the shipyards. I think they do some cruise ship refurbish, refurbishment also. So that's I think one of the business that is um, that has uh, been uh, well, I don't know relatively popular. And then there is a, uh, a yacht, a kind of luxury yacht that are building. Uh, catamarans so but I'm sure that's a small scale production as well I mean nothing nothing I think to, to uh, the capacity of, of these sh of the shipyard I mean, you see that's gigantic and what they can build all kinds of ships uh, and place just doesn't look that busy the tall building there onto the onto the right is called the sea tower it's um, kind of a, uh, you could call it luxury and high-end apartment buildings some money to, to buy an apartment there so you have a you're basically in the, close to the downtown area but you have a nice view of everything got a little hazy towards the towards the evening so maybe it's not that this building is not as great plus it's into the sun as, as before and so after uh, we we departed the area from desk we, we I wanted to fly over to Malborg and Malborg is an area where they have an Castle built by the Teutonic Knights back in the was it 12th or 13th century. Um, so an old castle, and you can see it right there. We're gonna we're gonna circle it, and it's super impressive to go in there from the ground. But it even is impressive. It looks gigantic even from from the from the air. I mean, it is uh, it's just massive, and it well preserved. You know, it didn't uh, didn't get destroyed uh, during the World War II because. Well, it's away from the city, so it um, didn't get bombed, and uh, you could see how, how, how massive it is and how just, I mean, for, being, for the Middle Ages, it's a, it's, a huge, it's a huge complex, if you will. But anyway, uh, we're um, finishing our, our flight, and we're landing here in Gdańsk again, Gdańsk Airport, and we're uh, making a left base to runway 1111 again. And uh, you will see us start to start making the turn right there, off, off to the left. You will see like a red roof. There's a another European Union project, or uh, it's a train that takes you to the airport. So if you ever visit Gdańsk um, and you want to get downtown from the airport, you don't have to even take the taxi or anything. You just get right on the train, and we'll, we'll take it to wherever you. So this is, I would think, uh, hopefully useful to you, uh, just to give you a little glimpse of how it, this area of Poland looks from the air. It was very, I was very happy to see see all of this um, because I've never seen it from the air until now. And I lived there for 16 years, and so I know a lot of those areas. But it looks completely different from the air. I would say it looks a lot smaller and everything looks a lot closer from the air than it, what it used to. I guess when you're a child, everything looks bigger probably. Now that you get, got, uh, got older, uh, things maybe shrink. So uh, we landed, we're, um, we are uh, vacating the runway. 
again, just one runway there. And another interesting part about flying at this airport and many other airports that I noticed in Poland is they have those follow me cars. And I always laugh because, again, one runway, where are you gonna get lost? How you cannot find your way? But yet, they have to follow these cars with flashing lights and you would think that this is Frankfurt uh, or Heathrow, but um, you know, they like, they like doing it this way. And okay, they, you just follow them and then they'll park you and I guess uh, they just want you to not to get lost, I guess. <clears throat> and um, so that's, I always chuckle at this because they used to have these cars for forever. I appreciate when they have them in the big airports because you do you, you can get lost, but not in here, <laughs> for sure. I hope that someday maybe you get to visit Poland, and uh, I don't know if you're gonna go flying, but at least uh, this will give you a little glimpse of uh, this wonderful part of Poland. Uh, Gdańsk is really historic, beautiful to see, over a thousand years old, and there's a lot to do and see over there. And the nice thing about that, as you've seen from the air everything is really close and public transportation will get you everywhere and it's and it's very safe as well so hopefully uh, again you enjoyed this and uh, thank you for watching